friends, welcome back to the homestead. It is grocery haul time again. I can't believe it's already that time. I go grocery shopping about once a month. It actually has only been about three, a little over three weeks since I went last time, but this weekend is supposed to be pretty gross. And so I figured it's not a good weekend to work in the garden. So I wanna get some more freezer meals in the freezer. So I need to go grocery shopping so that I would have those things on hand so that tomorrow, tomorrow's Friday, I'll be able to get those freezer meals done. The freezer meals that I did last time, if you wanna watch the freezer meals I did last time, I'll link a video up here for you. But we're getting pretty low on them. I think I only have like four or five left in the freezer. So I wanna to try to get a bunch more in the freezer so that, when, so that when I'm working outside in the garden, I don't have to worry about dinner. So I spent, I went to Walmart and I spent 134 at Walmart and most of those things were groceries except for two items. So I spent about 128 on actual groceries for the month and most of those are gonna be going into freezer meals. And then I went to Costco and I spent $250, but I'll break that down because only about $50 of that was actual groceries and the other stuff was household goods and I'll kind of tell you what that is. At the end of the video, I'll go through my list of the freezer meals I'm planning to do so you can kind of have an idea of what I'm planning to do with freezer meals. So let's get right into it. I've got some hamburger buns here and some frosted flakes. We don't eat this for breakfast. This is just a midnight snack for my husband. And I got two different styles of pasta. These are mostly for the freezer cooking meals I'm doing. I realized I was going to Costco today. I had to go to Costco to get dog food because we are almost out. And so I wasn't planning on it. And so when I put my Walmart order in, I put pasta. And I prefer the organic pasta at Costco because it's a really good price. But because I didn't think I was gonna go, I went ahead and got it at Walmart and this isn't organic, but that's fine. We'll eat it. I got a couple things of yellow onions and two red onions, four packs of tri-colored peppers, some yummy bananas, carrots, two things of cilantro, two things of parsley, five heads of broccoli, two heads of cauliflower, um, a package of avocados, and some cherry tomatoes. I went ahead and got some fresh garlic today. This garlic looks really beautiful, actually. I'm really impressed with this variety. I don't know what it is, but I think it's really pretty. We have been using powdered garlic for the past couple months since we ran out of the homegrown stuff. I'm really happy to have some fresh garlic on hand for some of the recipes I'm gonna be doing tomorrow. Now, this is kind of a fun thing. I went ahead and got a thing of black beans and pinto beans. These I don't plan to eat. So what I'm thinking to do with these beans actually is to use them as seed out in my garden. I planted two weeks ago my corn field. Well, it's not really a field, it's a patch, my corn patch. And I had a volunteer winter squash come up in that area. So it kind of got me thinking, I wanna to try to do a three sisters garden, which is a Native American gardening method where you plant corn, pole beans, and the the pole beans grow up the corn and they're nitrogen fixers and they help feed the corn and the squash helps prevent weeds because it kind of vines out on the ground. Well, when I got that information this week while I was at work, I was thinking I'm just gonna order some pinto beans and some black beans and plant these in the ground and see if they grow up as pole beans. Now, I was researching Pinto beans and black beans can be both bush beans and pole beans, so I don't know which these are, but they were only a dollar, so I figured I'm just gonna throw them in the ground and see what happens. <laughs> if they end up being bush beans, then I will see if I get anything. If I don't get anything, it's not that big of a deal because the, both of these packages cost me a dollar, so it's not a big waste, and I doubt I would even use a fraction of these out there because my corn patch is not that big. But if they end up being pole beans and grow up, then awesome. But I figured it was cheaper than running out to go buy actual pinto bean and black bean seeds. Moving on from the beans, I got a couple hot sauces. I made my own hot sauce last year and I just ran out of it. And I try to eat mostly our own homemade hot sauce if I can, but since I'm out of it now and I'm not gonna have it for a few months because the peppers aren't gonna be in until August, I figured I would go ahead and pick up two of my favorites. Sriracha has been my long time favorite, but one of my new favorites now is Tabasco sauce. We had a friend live with us for about a year and a half and he and he got me on to the Tabasco sauce and he's going to be moving in with us in a few months so I figured I would go ahead and pick some of that up for him and I. I went ahead and got some garam masala spices. This is for one of the freezer meals I'm doing. I normally buy my spices in bulk but I didn't have time to get it between now and tomorrow so I just put that in my Walmart grocery haul pickup. And this was $4.99, so this was definitely expensive compared to buying it in bulk, but that's sometimes what you pay for when you need convenience. I went ahead and got some provolone cheese and some salami. I wanted something that would be easy to grab on the go when I'm heading out the door or when I'm going out into the garden that would be a high protein, high energy item that's easy to eat, so that's why I got both of those, just a really easy snack. 
or breakfast, I would eat this on the way to work because it would be filling and easy. This yogurt goes with the garam masala, actually. I'm gonna do chicken tiki masala as one of the freezer meals, and so that's what I needed the plain yogurt for. If you watch my latest video, you'll know that I messed up on six pounds of homemade soap that I was making. It was pretty devastating because it was tallow soap, which I had rendered the tallow down to make the soap. But I was researching and I realized that I can make that soap into laundry soap. Somehow when I was measuring, I measured incorrectly and the soap is very lye heavy which you can't use on your skin, but you can use in laundry detergent. I found two recipes online, how to turn your lye heavy soap into laundry detergent. One of them calls for borax and washing soda, and one of them does not call for borax. I put borax on my grocery list, but Walmart was out of it. So I got the washing soda and I'm thinking, I'll probably try both a recipe with the borax and the washing soda and a recipe without it, but I don't know. I have to think more and do a little bit more research on that, but that's what that washing soda is for. And some of the last few Walmart things are I got some heavy whipping cream for some of the freezer meals and some half and half for coffee in the morning and some foil pans. I did not ask for the ones with the lids, but they didn't have the ones without the lids, so this is what I got. This was the substitution. I'm really working hard on getting away from those foil pans when I do my freezer cooking. I actually have here two Pyrex dishes that I purchased at Goodwill last week, and I have two more that I got at Goodwill that I purchased in the dishwasher, and I'm gonna be trying to transition from foil pans into these. When I find these at Goodwill, I'm gonna try to get a collection of maybe like 10 of them, and right now I probably have six i think so but for now i still need a few of the foil pans from walmart so i have my list and i spent a total of 251 dollars at costco and 51 dollars of that was actual groceries and the rest of it was household goods and a couple other things my husband likes to break his budget up into different categories so a total between the walmart and the costco groceries i spent a total of 169 dollars just on groceries which is pretty good because this along with a bunch of other stuff i have in my house is going to last us at least the next month so i'm pretty happy with that price because um 169 isn't bad for a month's worth of groceries and i'm actually thinking this is going to go down quite a bit because the garden produce is starting to come in and so i'm going to stop buying as much produce at the grocery store because hopefully we'll be eating more of our own homegrown produce pretty soon. So let's go ahead and get into the Costco groceries. This is my husband and I's favorite cheese. This is the Tillamook Extra Sharp White Cheddar Cheese. This is super, super good. This is kind of more expensive. This is about $11 a block at Costco. If you buy this at Fred Meyers, you're spending $17 a block for this. And so what I like to do is use this and cut it with a little bit of Monterey Jack cheese because what this adds is great flavor and this adds the creaminess. If you, if you add just this, it kind of dries out because the cheese is pretty dry because it's at least two years old versus this cheese probably is only six months old so it's a lot softer, there's a lot more moisture in it. So I can one, kind of stretch the budget. You can see how hard this cheese is. You can stretch the budget because this is only like $8 a block but you also get the creaminess from this that you don't get from this, but you get the flavor from this that you don't get from this. So anyway, that's just a tip that I like to do. And I did forget to mention that this is from Walmart. I, I think I forgot to put that in with the Walmart haul. I got two things of naan. This is for the tiki masala. This freezes beautifully, so I'm just gonna throw these directly in the freezer, and then when I we eat the curry, then I'll pull them out. I got some hamburger buns here. I actually forgot I bought hamburger buns at Walmart and that's why I picked up some more hamburger buns at Costco. I actually like the Costco hamburger buns better. And I forgot that I wrote on my list, which we'll go over later, that I was planning to make homemade hamburger buns tomorrow and freeze them. But I guess I get to check that off the list because I purchased two things of hamburger buns and I don't need to make hamburger buns if I have plenty of hamburger buns now. I got some tortilla chips. Those are our favorite tortilla chips and some olive oil. This is gonna be for cooking. This is my favorite olive oil to make mayonnaise out of because it's a really light flavor and it doesn't add that really olive oily flavor. And then I wanna to try to make some more soap with some different types of fats and not just tallow. So I picked this up to try to do an olive oil, coconut oil, um, tallow soap as well, or some combination, I'm not sure, but that's what that's for. So I don't tend to spend a ton of money on wine and that's why I find Costco is a really good place to buy your wine because you can get some pretty good quality wine for under 10 bucks. I typically don't like to spend more than $8 a bottle unless I'm going to a winery and doing wine tasting and 
you know, get to taste it and know where it came from and blah, 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 then I'm willing to spend some more money on a bottle of wine. And then my husband and I usually save those for special occasions if we're gonna open those. But just for, you know, an everyday Friday night or whatever it might be, um, I really like to buy my wine at Costco because for the most part, I haven't had that many bottles that I don't like. And if I don't like them, then what I do is I just throw them in my fridge and those become my cooking wine. So I'm excited to try these and we'll see. I've been really enjoying Malbecs lately, so I hope these are good. I bought myself a squirt. Uh, there's actually two here because I bought two different sizes. I'll try them on and I will return at least one or two if I don't like either of them. But I figured this would be pretty comfortable to garden in. So that's why I went ahead and picked this up. Just has some spandex shorts on the inside. The dishwasher tabs and the dog food actually are what got me into Costco. I was not planning to go to Costco this week, like I said, but I only have like four of these left and I really need to not run out of dishwasher tabs. So these were actually, it was a good find. They were on sale for $5 each and they're normally $19.99 each. And so each of them were $15. So I went ahead and picked up two. So I actually just saved myself $10. That's one way I like to save on groceries is if I can find something on sale that is not gonna go bad and I know I'm gonna use it and it's $5 off, I'm gonna buy more than one because this literally just saved me $10 by buying two instead of just one. There was a limit on two and if there was a limit of four, I probably would have bought four because that would have saved me even that much more money. So one little tip I have for saving on groceries, if you find stuff on sale, buy more than one if it's not gonna go bad or if, if it is a perishable item, just know how to preserve it so that it can last. So I spent about $100 on dog food. I like to keep three on hand usually. We've got three dogs and this will last us probably three months or so, but I like to keep dog food upstairs and downstairs because our dogs free feed. And so it's just more convenient if I have dog food wherever they might want it. And so I buy different flavors too so that they have a little bit of variety. They are the same brand. They're just the Costco brand. They have the same protein and carbohydrate ratios. So you can't interchange them without them getting a tummy ache. And so I really like this brand. We were buying a really expensive brand of dog food, uh, Taste of the Wild, but I had to cut some things out of my budget and one thing was expensive dog food. And they actually like this dog food way better than they ever liked the Taste of the Wild. So I'm really happy that I started buying this because it's really affordable and they love it. So that's the grocery haul. Let's go ahead and go over my very fancy um, freezer cooking meal list that I'm gonna be doing. One thing I did do while I was at it and bringing groceries in is I put all the meat that I need for the freezer cooking meals for tomorrow out to dethaw right now because I don't want to get up in the morning and be ready to do my freezer meals and the meat not be thawed. So while I was bringing in groceries, I went ahead and brought those in and I'm gonna have them thawing and I'll make sure all that meat gets put in the refrigerator before I go to bed. So let's go through the freezer cooking meal ideas. Um, if you watched the last grocery haul I did, I bought four Costco chickens and I made chicken broth out of the bones, but I froze the meat and I didn't use the meat at all last month. So I wanted to try to come up with some recipes that was gonna use that meat. So the first three recipes are gonna use that Costco meat, the Costco rotisserie chickens. So I'm gonna do chicken tikka masala, broccoli chicken, like a broccoli chicken Alfredo type bake. I'm gonna do jambalaya, and then I'm gonna do sloppy joes. I'm gonna make eight pie crust so that I have pie crust in the freezer to make quiche. We have chickens, and right now I'm getting, I don't know, eight for anywhere from six to nine eggs a day, so we need to eat a lot of eggs around here. Um, I do give a lot of eggs away. Having the pie crust in the freezer really helps. I can make quiche easily, and it's a great way to use up eggs. I'm gonna do sloppy joes, sweet and sour meatballs, and then I've got a bunch of marinated chicken that we're gonna be doing. The last freezer meal cooking that I did, I did teriyaki chicken, it was a marinated chicken, and we've been loving it, and I figured as the, it gets warmer, it's gonna be really awesome to have different marinated chickens in the freezer so I can just pull them out and cook them on the smoker or, or the grill or whatever when the weather's warm after a long day gardening. I thought that would be nice. So I've got three different, no, I've got, yeah, so I've got three different marinated chickens that we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna do, I don't know the name of it because it's a marinated chicken my mom used to make when I was young and she would pound the chicken out. And so I called it smash chicken, which sounds really gross. So I'm not gonna call it that. I'm gonna call it something else when I actually make the recipe. I don't have the exact recipe, but I'm gonna make it up and I'll write it down for you guys. Um, it's kind of like a lemon, garlic, Worcestershire marinade. It's really, really good. And so I'm gonna make that. I'm gonna do a honey mustard marinated chicken. I'm gonna do more teriyaki chicken. And then we're gonna do fajita chicken marinade. I'm gonna cut the chicken in strips. And where are you going, bud? 
Where are you going? He just went in the bathroom. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> and so anyway, I'm going to do um, uh, fajita chicken so that I can make fajitas really fast and we can have tacos. I hope you guys enjoyed that grocery haul. I hope you guys stick around and subscribe because the next video is going to be freezer. Excuse you, Gizmo. It's going to be this big freezer cooking day, and I'm really looking forward to having a bunch more freezer meals in my freezer. If you guys enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up, and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye, guys.